Hot balancing your battery is super important. It is the best way to maximize the amount of power that your battery can hold. If you don't top balance your battery, you might have the potential to hold, say, 100 amp hours in your battery. But because you didn't top balance it, you'll only get like 40 to 50 amps if you're lucky. And the reason is, if you don't top balance your battery, you can't actually fully charge your battery. So your battery is never fully charged, so therefore it can never actually hold the power that you need it to give you. By top balancing your battery, you will be able to fully charge the battery, which means that it'll give you all the power that it can actually possibly physically hold in there. So in this video, we're going to be going over how to top balance your battery, how to get it set up, and how long does it actually take. Now top balancing is literally having one power supply hook up to each cell or each group of cells and charge up to 3.65 volts. That is it. It's very time consuming. This is going to take a couple days to do. You don't have to do anything. You just set it up. Now, to do that properly, you need one power supply per cell group. So if you're doing a 12 volt battery, you need to have four of them. If you're doing a bigger battery, you need even more of them. Now, that's to do it the correct way. There's also the incorrect way, which gets the same job done, but it takes forever, which is to use one and you charge up this group. Once this one's full charge, go to this one, then go to this one, then go to this one. But if you're going to take about three days per group, you're looking at 12 days to get this one battery done. All you do is you turn it on. And it's always important to turn it on without this connected because if it's connected, you don't really know what they're set to because it's going to be reading what the battery is. So you want to then set the voltage on each of these to be 3.65. Okay, so each one is set to 3.65 volts. Now, if you notice, there's no amperage because there's nothing connected to this and no wattage because same thing, nothing's connected. Okay, so make sure you have access to each group, okay? First one, we're gonna hook up the positive and negative to each group. Now, remember, this together is a 12 volt battery, but each one is its own three volt battery. So positive there and negative here. Now, when I hook it up, you can see right away, it starts pumping in the amps, it's pumping in the watts, and we're gonna go watching as the voltage goes increasing on the app itself. All right, next one, positive and negative. So we got the positive there, and the negative will go to that bar right there. Okay, next one, and you can see it's got its power now. Next one, we're gonna do positive and negative. And then positive and negative again. Okay, so looking at this, you can see some of the things that look a little confusing. Like here we have a negative and a positive on the exact same bar, but yet they're going to different areas. That's because this negative is part of this positive. So the battery is in the middle between them. There is no circuit connecting this positive to this negative through the power supply. So therefore they don't really care about each other. So it's not that when you put a positive and negative, it's not gonna short out and it's also not gonna cancel out. It's just going to not care because each three volt battery is its own thing. Now, we can see that the voltage is slowly starting to climb. So that's just gonna keep going on there and we're just going to let this keep balancing. So this is gonna go charging up right now. We can see that the ones that are connected, they're reading a little less than 3.65 volts. But when they get up there, we'll see most importantly, the wattage is gonna drop. So what happens is right now, these batteries are empty. So the battery takes all the power it can get because when the power supply is giving it, it's putting out, you know, four and a half amps. Actually, let's make sure the amps are at the max. Yep. Okay, so it's putting out its power. 
it's giving four and a half amps. The battery will gladly take it. When the battery gets full, it can't take that many amps anymore. So therefore we're gonna see that the amps are gonna go dropping. The other thing we're gonna see, because volts times amps equals watts. So watts is a relation of volts and amps. We're gonna see the wattage drop. Now when we see the wattage drop to 0 0.1 or even less of just flat out zero, then we know that they're full. So it might be that tomorrow or the next day, this might be putting in like one to two watts, but then all of a sudden it's just gonna drop because it's done and the batteries are full and everything is set. At that point, it's now top balanced and then we can take it from there. Now, during this process, these cells could puff up and explode. That's not good. So all we have to do is put some weight on them. That's gonna keep the pressure on them and then everything's fine. Now, can you top balance this battery without the connecting bars making the battery in series? Yes, you can very well do that. You just do each one on its own and then add the bars afterwards. That's totally fine. But having the bars or not doesn't impair your ability to top balance in this way. In order to keep these cells from swelling, what we need to do is put them under compression. Now the flat sides are the ones, like the big broad side is the one that can puff. These little ones are pretty strong, so we don't have to worry about that. We need something on this side and on the other. So normally you make, make a jig that then compresses everything together, or you use gravity for one side. And I'm just gonna put that there. And we'll just go dropping some weight on this. So we're gonna put about 40 pounds on top of this thing. And that will provide enough pressure to keep it down. So like I said, you don't have to be crushing them. You just need to have some pressure holding them. All right, so with that on there, it's got about 40 pounds sitting on top of it. So it's not gonna puff up because gravity is doing the compression for us. So once we have it fully charged up and everything's ready to go there, when we put it inside the Pelican case, that'll give it the compression that it needs for the rest of its life. So top balancing your batteries can take a long time. For this example, we're gonna use a 100 amp hour battery and you're top balancing it and your power supplies are putting in about three amps. That means that at a minimum, you're looking at about 33 hours of top balancing. That's over a day. The truth is, as it goes approaching more and more charge, it's going to be taking less and less power, which means that it's going to take even longer to actually top balance. So in our situation for this battery build, they have been top balancing for the past five days. They're almost done, but they're not done yet. And it's super important that you let them actually finish because if you let them top balance all the way to completion, then you're set forever. If you cut it short early and you know, you're in a rush and you don't really top balance them all the way, well, they're not all the way top balanced. Now, if you rush it, your battery is not gonna be fully top balanced. And that means that when you're charging the battery, one of the cells is gonna reach full charge long before the others, and you're not gonna be able to hold as much power as you could have if you just gave it the time that it needs and top balanced it properly the first time. So why top balance? What is the whole issue with it? And why is it that the cells show such a huge difference at these high levels? Another way of thinking of it is if you have two different bottles and both of the bottles, you know, they're big at the bottom, but then at the top, they get really narrow for the neck. You're using them, you're adding water back and forth. It doesn't really make much of a difference. As long as you're in the body of the bottle, there's no huge difference in how much water can each one hold. You pour it in, you pour the same amount of water into each, everything's fine. Now, when they start getting full, suddenly it becomes important because when the body of the bottle ends and now you're just filling up the neck there it fills up really quickly so what ends up happening is you add the same amount of water but one's going to overflow the other one's going to fill up you know like normal and it's not an issue the one that overflows in water is just going to make a mess but in lithium cells it's going to make a fire you want to make sure that all of them are full at the same time that way when you add to all of them indiscriminately during the charging cycle 
they all get to the same full level at the same time. That way they all hold as much power, or water if you're thinking of the analogy, as possible. So that's the idea of top balancing. Get them all full to the same level, and then when you start using them, they all fill back up to the same level, and everything's fine. That's the, the general gist of it. So that's why we're going to sit here for three days staring at these, not doing anything else until they are full charge and ready to go. Now, when you take the charger off, you're going to see that they're all going to kind of go back to rest and they're going to sag. It's they're just going to like drop in voltage a bit. They should all drop at around the same amount. The important part is then afterwards, when you charge them again as a single battery, they all charge and get back to the same full value all at the same time. So. I consider full at 3.5. The 3.6 part, I don't really worry about because we don't charge to that. So you're never going to really get there because you don't really want to full charge a lithium battery. It's it's not good for it. It likes to live in, you know, the 80% range. So don't full charge it that last 10% and don't discharge it that last 10%. Keep it in the middle there. So top balancing these cells took six days. At the beginning, the power supplies are putting in a bunch of power because the cells are empty and just absorbing all the amperage that we gave them. As they got more full, they weren't able to absorb as much as quickly, and the rate of charge decreased incredibly. And they ran for a few days at just absorbing about a hundredth to a thousandth of an amp. So not much power is flowing there at all. But by continuing to just keep pushing the power until they reached full charge. So now in a sense, the battery cells are equal in power to what the power supply was giving it. No more power is flowing. You can see the amperage and the watt meters, they're all reading zero. So that means that the cells are all equally and fully charged to the max. So at this point, all the cells have the exact same amount of power in them. So therefore they are all top balanced. They're balanced but at the top level. The opposite is where you drain all the batteries and drain them to the exact level. That's called bottom balancing. But I, I'm not a huge fan of that one. I much prefer top balancing because on a sailboat, you're never going to be fully draining the batteries all the time, but you will have them fully charged all the time. The sun's gonna be putting in the power, the solar panels are gonna be giving the power, and the batteries are going to be full charge. So that is the whole procedure for top balancing. It's very lengthy. It's not very labor intensive, but it does take a long time to complete. So now we're gonna continue with the rest of the battery build. So just click on the link and that'll take you back to the original video where we will finish building this battery.